Hey VC, it's Jonathan, your Chief and Cheerful Record Collector. Hope everybody's doing well out there and um, getting by. Uh, this is going to be a thread from Chris Toons from the Man Cave, who did his Jazz Vinyl Tag 2021, uh, asking 21 questions. Um, I thought it was a great idea, so uh, I'm going to jump on it. Since we have 21 questions and a lot of records to get to, we should get going. First one is album that got you into jazz. Okay, so a little story. Uh, 1964, I think it was. I was 15 years old, and I was away at summer camp, and I was a, uh, a JC, used to call him, junior counselor. And all the junior counselors lived together. We had our own bunk, and we had a turntable, a record player. We used to play records. And um, my dad came up on visitor's day and brought me this five piece, five LP set of jazz albums. Um, there are five records and I basically only played one record all the time. One album had uh, one side had Maynard Ferguson, the other side, number two, had Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, Stan Getz with Horace Silver, Errol Garner, Art Tatum, and Bud Powell. And that's the side that I played over and over and over again. The one record was all Sarah Vaughan, one was uh, Joe Williams, um, Count Basie I listened to now and then. Uh, one of the sides I'd listened to because that had John Coltrane Quartet. But this was the first, the first album of jazz that I listened to that really got me into jazz. I mean, my dad always played Sinatra and Ella at home. But when I heard... Uh, Parker and Miles Davis and Dizzy Gillespie doing Swing Low Sweet Cadillac <laughs> blew me away. I was 15 years old and I never looked back. So that was the first album uh, that got me into jazz. Um, probably the next year, I don't know what possessed me to get this album, but this was the first album, jazz album I bought. This is not the exact copy because mine's long gone. I replaced it, but the jazz album I first bought was uh, Thelonious Monk in Action um, with Johnny Griffin at the record at the Five Spot in New York City. This is an amazing record. Light Blue coming on the Hudson. Um, Blue Monk, Johnny Griffin, Thelonious Monk, Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Abdul Malik, and Roy Haynes recorded in 1958. This might have been the first jazz album I bought on my own and listened to it constantly on Riverside. Uh, this is a uh, repress, an OJC repress, but it's super clean and real happy to get it added to my collection. Um, a record you own on Blue Note, of course, could have gone a million ways. We all have a million Blue Note albums, but the one I chose was Horace Silver Quintet, and this is uh, Songs of My Father. Um, what can you say? Blue Note with uh, Carmel Jones on trumpet, John Henderson on tenor sax, and Horace Silver on uh, piano, Teddy Smith on bass, and Roger Humphreys on drums. What a phenomenal, phenomenal record. So beautiful. <clears throat> There's actually uh, a friend of mine's who uh, passed away and uh, his uh, partner gave me his whole record collection. This is one of those treasured albums I have of his, but fantastic, Horace Silver. Um, Blue Prestige, album you want Prestige. This was a uh, Goodwill find believe it or not. Um, Kenny Burrell, Blue Moods, fantastic record. Um, Tommy Flanagan, Elton Jones. I don't, I don't have a date on it. I should have done a little more research on that. But there's the green prestige label. And this is a wonderful, wonderful record. Really love it. And a fantastic cover, too. I have some prestige records. Uh, Impulse, again, a million ways you can go. I chose Mingus, Mingus, Mingus. Charles Mingus album. Fantastic record. Um, As I said before, I'm old enough, I'm lucky enough, I got to see Mingus at the Village Vanguard back in 
back again at 65, 66, when I was like 16, 17 years old. They used to have um, Sunday afternoon uh, matinees, like 2.30, 3 o'clock. And I was with a friend, we were walking around the village and we see a sign, Charles Mingus, so we popped in and we were able to witness the great Charles Mingus. So there you go. Charles Mingus, 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 Mingus. Um, that was Impulse. Riverside. This, is, this one I picked up fairly recently. Um, it's an OJC, but it's Max Roach. And this is words, deeds, not words. Um, with Booker Little. Coleman, uh, George Coleman, uh, 1958. Fantastic record and a great cover. The great Max Roach. Um, Riverside uh, Contemporary. Don't have a lot of contemporary, but this is one which I got recently also and is fantastic. Art Pepper. Art Pepper at the Village Vanguard. A Night at the Village Vanguard. Thursday night, it was a Thursday night at the Village Vanguard. They did a bunch, they did a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights at the Village Vanguard. Um, I wish they put them out as a set, that'd be really nice. But um, yeah, with Elvin Jones, uh, it was recorded uh, 1977, July 28th, 29th, and 30th, 1977, at the Village Vanguard. Sorry, the glare, that's a little better there. But the great Art Pepper. Um, small label, subsidiary. Here's one that, um, I love this label, and it's called Limelight. And I guess originally it was uh, started by, um, can't think of it now. Anyway, what I like about the Limelight, besides having great musicians, this is uh, Oscar Peterson. It folds out like that, which is so cool. And they have a, once it's open, they have a half-page booklet with information. They just do a beautiful job, and they, I have a couple of these uh, Limelight albums. But it's a nice, small, contemporary, I mean, small, modern jazz label. This is the Oscar Peterson one. Really nice. Oscar Peterson trio recorded live in the Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen. We were there a number of years ago. Very cool. So there you go a smaller label. A record you own that many people don't know about, but should. Not just a record, it's an artist many people don't know about, and they should. And it is the great Tal Farlow. Uh, Tal Farlow was a fantastic uh, jazz guitar player. <clears throat> 50s and 60s, sort of retired from uh, recording for a while. Um, these are all recorded 55... 69, two different records, remastered in 74. Uh, Tal Farlow, Red Norvo, and Red Mitchell on one album, and the other album is with John Scully, Jack Six, and Alan Dawson on drums. But uh, if you don't know Tal Farlow, definitely check him out. Fantastic. Well, nothing there. But yeah, he was... Um, He's, the, as they say, the guitar player's guitar player. Uh, a jazz musician's jazz musician. Tal Farlow. Uh, let's see. Favorite jazz record bought in 2020. Um, before the lockdown, my wife and I were lucky enough, we were in uh, London. And we came, right before we came back, I was able to hit a couple of record stores. And one of the ones I saw that I had to grab was Chet Baker. And this is his album called Ballads which is a compilation, two LP compilation, uh, UK, pre uh, EU pressing. I think it's French actually. And it has, you know, My Funny Valentine, My Old Flame, um, Lush Life, I Can't Get Started. It was recorded 56, uh, 1953, and go, mostly 59, um, Little Girl Blue, How Long Has This Been Going On? I've grown accustomed to her face. Fantastic. Two LP set. Chet Baker. Ballads. Um, favorite record in artist discog discography? I, I don't have his whole discography, but the record I really love is uh, Lee Morgan Sidewinder. 
Um, again, I don't have everything he did. I don't have everything he did as a leader, but out of everything I have, this is my favorite album by him. Lee Morgan, Sidewinder. Um, favorite record bought in a brick and mortar shop? Well, I got so many, but I figured I can't let a jazz thing go without talking about Django Reinhardt. <clears throat> this is a fantastic album with the Quintet of the Hot Club of France, 1935-1939. Um, it was actually the first Django album I heard many, many years ago, probably in the late 60s, and uh, have been hooked on him ever since. Um, I had it, I lost it when I got rid of my collection, and I was just happy to rebuy it uh, the past couple of months and add it back to the collection. But you all know Django Reinhardt with Stefan Grappelli. It's the one to get. Fantastic. Um, record you bought online. I recently got this um, tone poet, the Tina Brooks. Bought that online. We all know this great album with Lee Morgan, Sonny Clark, Doug Watkins, and Art Blakey. Uh, I think this is one of the ones Tina Brooks was recorded and never released, and then finally released later on. But uh, we all know the Tone Poet things, how beautiful they are, how great they made them. Great pictures inside from the recording sessions on Blue Note. There you go, Tina Brooks. Um, a record a friend found for you or gifted you. All right, this is going to be hard to believe, but a friend of mine um, goes to a place. We have a we have a, a Goodwill by the pound here, where they sell things. They would just weigh them and sell them by the pound. And he buys furniture and instruments that he fixes up and resells. But he's always looking for records, even though he doesn't really collect. He keeps an eye out. So he bought this, it probably cost him less than a dollar. And he brought it to me and it is Ornette Coleman, The Shape of Jazz to Come. And it is an original mono pressing. The only problem with it, it is so scratched and beat up, it's barely listenable. I've listened to it a couple of times, but it, it, it pains me to hear it this way. So I'm going to add this as a twofer, and this will be the album I would like to get an upgrade to this year as well. Actually, I got two of them, but this is one I would like to get an upgrade, which is a question later on in the 21 questions. So yeah, The Shape of Jazz to Come, Ornette Coleman. Um, most recent jazz. Uh, very, very, oh, jazz box set. I don't do a lot of box sets. I find you don't listen to them a lot. Uh, they seem overwhelming, so you're sort of like, I have a couple of these. They're not the best, but it's the Time Life series, and this is with my my man who I really love is Bix Beiderbeck. And this is a Bix Beiderbeck box set. Again, this was a, another Goodwill purchase. I think it's three, uh, three LPs. Yeah, three LPs. And um, Bix is like the original um, tragic jazz musician. Drank himself to death by the time he was like 28 years old or something. But whew, what a horn player. Big Spiderbeck, that's my box set. Um, a Jazz 10 inch. Another good will find. What can I tell you? Like two, three years ago, Billy Holiday sings on Columbia. Fantastic. The real deal. And it is in very, very playable condition. There's a red Columbia label. And on this she does The Man I Love, St. Louis Blues. I'm gonna lock my I'm gonna lock my heart. All of me, me, myself, and I. Let's go do it. You go to my head and traveling all alone. And it's one of my one of my prizes to have found this a goodwill for two bucks is just amazing. There you go. My 10-inch. Most recent jazz score. I got a couple. I was at a uh, 
junk shop uh, about an hour north of me. <clears throat> the guy has three, 4,000 albums. He sells it two bucks each. And I'm digging through. And Benny Goodman Quartet, Together Again. So it's with Lionel Hampton, Gene Krupa, and Teddy Wilson. This is a UK pressing on that British RCA Victor label, which is very cool. Where are we? Here we are. RCA Victor label. And um, again, I'm not a huge Benny Goodman fan, but with the quartet, it's just great. And uh, really happy to pick this up, add this to my collection. It's got that floppy uh, UK cover. So that was a good little find. That's the latest one I got. Got that last week. Um, jazz record you hope to find in 2021. Uh, believe it or not, I do not have a copy of Blue Train. And I would love to get a nice copy of Blue Train. I've seen the 75th anniversary, the 75th uh, Blue Note version around. I'm trying to stay away from that. So I'm looking for a nice copy of Blue Train. That's really high on my list of things I need to get. Um, free jazz record and this is also one I want to upgrade so it's a, a twofer just like the other one I want to get the Ornette Coleman which I could have used as a free jazz and an upgrade also but I have this crummy copy of uh, Coltrane's um, Love Supreme I'd like to get a, a really good copy of Love Supreme this is a uh, digitally remastered from the original stereo master tape so it's, it's fine for what it is, but uh, it's just a placeholder, really. And I'd like to get a nice copy of um, Love Supreme. And Desert Island Jazz Album. I mean, there's so many. Hard to say, but I have to go with my favorite jazz musician of all time. And the one out of his catalog I would take would be Thelonious Monk, Criss Cross. Um... Could have been a lot of different ones. I, I, I love Monk, but uh, I decided to go with Criss Cross as Charlie Rouse, Frankie Dunlap, and John Orr on bass. And uh, this was a, a limited edition pressing. Oh, excuse me. What do we say here? Uh, da, 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 da. Master of the Original Analog Taste by Bernie Grudman, pressed on an audiophile grade uh, thing, 180 gram pressed in Germany, a limited edition, 2,000 copies. I got number 1388, but I would take this with me. I could listen to this again and again and again. Never grow tired of it. Great Thelonious Monk. All right, so that's my um, Final Tag 2021 uh, jazz. Uh, Chris, that's a great idea. i uh, watched a number of them, and I really enjoy them. i got a couple more to watch. Um, anybody else has... Uh, inclination please jump in and uh, do another do a vinyl tag for this okay hey folks until next time take care of yourself and peace <laughs>